How's it going everyone? My name is Christian. I'm a third year medical student currently studying for the step two and I was going to start doing a series of very quick less than five minute reviews on certain topics that I thought were high yield. So if you are interested keep on watching. So my topic today is bone tumors. So I feel like bone tumors are very overwhelming if you just like look at the table and try to approach them brute force. But if you apply a more methodical approach, like I did here, um, you might be able to make more sense of them. So the first distinguishing feature I make is if, they're, if the patient is older, greater than 40 years old, or if the lesion is more multifocal, it's most likely to be a metastatic tumor or a multiple myeloma. And if the patient's a little younger, and these are just generalizations, but they'll hold up more times than not. You can think about where the lesion is, what, what kind of bone the lesion is on. So if they're on the long bone, you can think diaphysis, metaphysis, or epiphysis. So if the lesion's in the diaphysis, it's most likely to be either an osteoid osteoma, which is a benign tumor that tends to respond very, very well to NSAIDs with, and presents with severe pain at night. Or if it's a, it could be a malignant E-wing sarcoma, and we know that the classic sign for that is an onion ring sign on plain film, and the, tra the translocation 1122. And I believe Patrick Ewing's jersey number is 22, so if that helps you remember that, very good. So if the tumor is in the metaphysis, it could be an osteosarcoma, so this is the classic Codman's triangle lifting the periosteum to give you the sunburst pattern on plain film, and or an osteochondroma, which gives you this pedunculated lesion growing away from the joint space down here. And then if it's on the very tip, it could be a giant cell tumor, which I've shown here is more common in females. And this is, these are like the giant cells, the osteoclasts in the end of the bone. If it's in what I like to call the, like the weirder bones, like the paranasal sinuses, it could be an osteoma, which is associated with Gardner syndrome. It could be an enchondroma in the hands, so it gives you these O-ring signs, as you can see down here. Or it could be in the flat bones of hips and ribs, so the chondrosarcomas. And these are just, this is a tumor of the chondrocytes, essentially. So, this is my approach to bone tumors, and if you have a better one, just leave it in the comments below, and I'll definitely update. And if you have any ideas for topics, just let me know as well. I hope you learned something, and I hope you can read through this. Hopefully it helps you. Thank you very much for listening, guys.